Hi guys, so welcome back to Bisrat for Africa. Today we're going to be looking at a video from Muaba Ayaleu from Unpopular Opinion. He is someone who is a regular contributor to that channel and he's somebody who knows his stuff. You know, he's well read, he's well informed. You know, he's not like people like Om Kuluntsingiza who will say that Constantine invented Christianity 325 AD. You know, so he'll affirm the date 325 AD but not actually check what does AD mean. You know, AD means Anno Domino, which is the, the Latin word that means the day of the Lord or the year of the Lord, rather. And so by people saying 325 AD, they are already saying it's 325 years after the birth of Jesus, but still say, no, he was invented at 325 after the birth or the day of the Lord. So this is somebody who at least he knows his information and uh, he seems to have studied and, and read you know, uh, about what he's talking about. And so a lot of the times we might assume that sometimes, you know, the conclusions that we arrive at are based on the amount of information that we have. But actually, sometimes we can arrive at the wrong conclusion, not because we don't have, you know, the right information, but it's about how we interpret the information, the presuppositions that we go to the information with. In other words, it's it's the, the way that you interpret the information. It's how you go to the information. It's what you pull out of the information. You know, it's the inferences that you draw from the information. And so that's where we're going to be looking at today. And there's a video where he makes the claim that Christianity is the worst thing that's ever happened to Africa. So we're going to be looking at that claim today, but let's take a look at the video. So obviously I'm not going to speak for Christianity. I'm going to speak my mind about it, yes. Historical reference about it, yes. The effects that Christianity has had on our community, yes, that's what I'll speak about. <coughs> but I'm not a Christian, and therefore I cannot speak for Christianity. You understand? But a lot of our Christian viewers would say, yeah, but you are always bashing Christianity. No, I'm not bashing Christianity. I'm speaking about Christianity. You get offended because you are a Christian listening to a non-Christian speaking about Christianity. If you just switch the channel and listen to a Christian speaking about Christianity, you'd feel so much better. You understand? You'd feel so much better because I'm not speaking for Christianity. I'm not advocating Christianity. I'm not preaching Christianity. I'm preaching open-mindedness. And in my open-mindedness, I speak about Rastafarians, I speak about Jews, I speak about Muslims, I speak about Izangoma, I speak about priests, I speak about everybody who I speak about. Now, Christians feel offended because Christianity is the golden child of spirituality. No, it's not. Get off your high horses. Christianity is the worst thing that happened to Africa. So there you have it. So Christianity is the worst thing that's ever happened to Africa, according to Abba Ayaleu from Unpopular Opinion. Now, it's very important that you understand that Abba Ayaleu is somebody that also calls out, you know, the falsehood in African spirituality. The same way that we would call out things that are false, you know, things like Iskrito or Back to Sender and all those things. He's also calling out those things as well at Unpopular Opinion. So we appreciate at least that he tries to be objective in his approach. But here's the problem is that when somebody does something wrong in the name of African spirituality, he's, you know, very easily says, this is not the principle, this is false. So he, he can make that distinction to say, this is true, this is false. This is how we should implement African spirituality, this is not. But however, he doesn't apply the same standard to, to Christianity. When somebody does something wrong in Christianity, Christianity is exactly like that. So even if somebody violates the principles of Jesus, even if somebody violates the principles of the Bible, no, this is Christianity. You know, if somebody hates their neighbor, you know, he's going to say, yes, Christianity is about hating your neighbor, even if it violates verses that says love your neighbor. You know, so that's the point I'm trying to make is that uh, people will say he's very much critical of everything and so he's objective. But the problem is that when he comes to Christianity, he takes one white stroke or brush and he paints everything with oppression, colonialism, and really doesn't look at the whole picture or doesn't tell the whole story. And this is what we call hasty generalization. It's a fallacy. You know, it's a fallacy 
of actually saying everything is like this because I've seen this one person doing this. Another example of this is if you're driving on the road and you see somebody who's driving a fast car, you know, one of those supercars, and, and they're driving very aggressively. And so you can say, well, everyone who has a fast car is aggressive. But the problem is that, do you know everyone who has a fast car? No. So then how do you draw the conclusion based on limited information, right? But what about people that maybe drive their fast cars you know, not in a wild way, not in an aggressive way, you know, so that's, that's, that's what we're talking about, that it is a, a sort of a generalization, is if I see a Christian mistreating people, therefore I can paint the whole thing in that light, but actually not looking at all the people who were Christian who didn't do all those things, who lived the values and principles of Jesus Christ. And so that's the first thing is also is that he, he tends to be somebody who is a narrativist. A narrativist is, is if I have a narrative about Christianity, I'm going to push that narrative and all the information that doesn't fit in that narrative, I'm going to throw out. It's almost like I can't see it, you know. And so, I mean, we can, we can look at people who are Christians who have done great things in the African continent. You know, we can look at people like uh, or Robert Sobugwe, you know, who was the founder of the PAC, the founders of the ANC were all Christian people. You know, they loved pe black people. They wanted to empower and liberate black people. I mean, almost all the liberation movements around the world were formed and developed in the church from Pan-Africanism, black consciousness, you know, the ANC, the PAC, and, and, and so on. And there's a video we recently did with uh, Udokta Mdingi, and he highlights all these areas uh, in our interview with him, and, and we'll leave the link in the description box for you to look at, for you to see actually the actual evidence where Christianity has been used to empower and liberate people, to advocate for justice in society and so on. But because all of that doesn't fit into the narrative, we must throw all of that out. You know, we must throw out people, you know, like King Menelik the, the second who fought against the Italians at the, the Battle of Adwa, you know, and he successfully, you know, Ethiopia today is the only nation that was successful in defeating all the European uh, powers that tried to invade it. It's the only nation that was never colonized, and it was a Christian nation. King Menelik II was a Christian, and so was the nation of Ethiopia. But because that doesn't fit in the narrative, we must throw all of those things out, you know. And so these are the things that, for me, uh, the problem is that when you go to your own belief, you say, this is not my belief, this is right, this is wrong. But when you go to other people's beliefs, you, 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 you then take one narrative and fit everything into a narrative in order to disprove it. But actually, if you can just tell the whole story that every religious belief or, or every belief system has a fake and an original. It's got its, its, its genuine principles and it's got people who, who come in the name of that religion but actually practice something else or push a different agenda and and we can demonstrate that as well in african spirituality and he demonstrates that in african spirituality as well why can't he apply the same standard when it comes to christianity now you might be sitting here as a christian and thinking where was christianity ever used you know in a negative sense so let me give you three examples one example would be when the missionaries came to africa they came you know with the agenda that they are going to share the gospel with people but at the same time they were partners of the colonial agenda in other words they came to preach the gospel but they were telling themselves that we're civilizing people and so there is the, the first problem is that when you're coming to people to share to them about jesus then because you're the one with the information with the knowledge and you know you are sort of the one that's civilizing people then you can say actually the gospel says your culture's wrong you're, you're you're a pagan you know you can easily demon, demonize other people's cultures and say you got to embrace my culture you know because i am christian and you're not i have this information and so that could be used as, as a way to erode people's cultures and so on but if you look at the bible <clears throat> you know there's nowhere in the bible where we are encouraged to follow one language group or one cultural group and leave all the other cultures to be wrong and so on. If you look at, you know, the book of Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, and the day of Pentecost is very significant because it's the first day of the church. It's the day that the church was born. It's the first day of Christianity when the Holy Spirit comes. But we read in the book of Acts that there were Africans who were there on the day of Pentecost. There were people from Libya who were there. There were people from Cyrene. There were people from Egypt. You know, So Africans were there from day one, according to the Bible. But we're told that when people were speaking in tongues, 
They were speaking the languages of those people so that the people who were there heard the gospel in their language. In other words, what the gospel affirmed is that you can hear the gospel in your language. You can live out the gospel also within your culture. You don't have to throw out everything in your culture in order to embrace the gospel. But the gospel is for all people. From day one, it's been like that. It's always been God's plan. And you, if you look at you know, Acts chapter 17, where there was a council of the church and all the leaders of the church came together to debate whether or not Gentiles should embrace the Jewish customs in order to be saved. And the council was unanimous in saying, no, Gentiles don't have to follow Jewish customs because the gospel is not inviting you to be a Jew. It's okay with you being an African, keeping your culture, your cultural identity and so on, but to embrace the gospel and really let the gospel find an expression within your culture in order to express itself. So, so the missionaries actually didn't understand that. And so really we should ask ourselves, was that a, a use of Christianity or was it a misuse of Christianity? Another example would be when the slave Bible was developed in order to convert the slaves and, and, and people could say, well, look, Christianity, they created the slave Bible to enslave people. Uh, and the slave Bible was, was written in 1807. And, uh, and so if we look at the slave Bible, we can see that there's three quarters of the Bible that were left out of the slave Bible. In other words, 90% of the Old Testament was thrown out so that they only retained 10% of the Old Testament. And then 50% of the New Testament was thrown out only to retain 50% of the New Testament. Now, you've got to ask yourself, was that Christianity? If you throw out three quarters of the Bible, are you still implementing Christianity or are you implementing something else? And so this is something that we must all look at, really, when we're saying Christianity was used for oppression, was used to enslave. Was it Christianity or was it a distorted view of Christianity? And so verses like Exodus 21 verse 16 would have been thrown out where it says anyone who kidnaps a man must be put to death. Or Deuteronomy chapter 23 verses 15 to 16 that says if a slave comes to take refuge among you, do not send him back to his master. Let him live among you in any town that he likes. Do not oppress them. And so these two verses you know, would have condemned the transatlantic slave trade where, where, where people were kidnapped from Africa. The Bible clearly condemned that. And that's why verses like that were censored, you know, uh, and verses that say if a slave, you know, breaks free and, and he comes to take refuge in your town, don't send him back. Let him live among you. Don't oppress him. And so if, even if you look at the whole Exodus narrative, it's about God liberating people from slavery. And this is what these uh, so-called missionaries who wrote the slave Bible took away. They didn't want those people to see that because if they had seen verses like that, there would have been a rebellion because they would be actually seeing a biblical basis for their freedom and so on. And so a censored Bible is no Bible. And if there's no Bible, how can you say you are implementing Christianity? You know, people could look at also um, maybe in our context in South Africa where the Dutch Reformed Church, you know, would come up with policies and uh, and maybe put theology around the apartheid policies you know and there were a lot of presidents in South Africa that you know were originally ministers and then they would have become presidents so like DF Milan you know he was a minister and then he became president uh Fervut was also a minister uh, in the Dutch reformed church and a theologian somebody very instrumental in shaping the policy of apartheid you know, and they used things like the curse of Ham to justify apartheid. But if, if you take a close look at the, that scripture, I think it's in Genesis chapter 9, uh, talking about, you know, uh, Noah's sons and how Noah, you know, he, he got drunk and got naked and one of his sons saw him who was Ham. And, uh, and then Noah goes on not to curse Ham, but to, to curse uh, Canaan who was one of his sons, but Canaan is the father of the Canaanites. You know, it's got nothing to do with Bantu people. It's got nothing to do with Africa. And never mind the fact that all of Noah's sons were probably black. And, you know, those that were white only became white because of climate and so on. And so, you know, these people misinterpreted the Bible. And so if you misinterpret the Bible, then you obviously are going to misimplement it. So we have to ask ourselves, were these people implementing the Bible or not? I know one of the, the slaves, uh, that was set free, set free was um, Frederick Douglass. And Frederick Douglass, you know, he obviously would have read the slave Bible, you know, when, when, he, when they were indoctrinating them. 
But we're told that when he finally could read for himself and he went to the Bible for himself, he said it's a fraud to call the belief or the religion of this land, talking about America, to call it Christianity. He, he said it's a misnomer. He says, and, and he went on to say that if you love you know, the, the pure religion of Christ, then you've got to hate the religion of this land. And so even the slaves, when they got a hold of the, the real Bible, they could see that this was not the real Bible. And so this is my response really to saying Christianity was the worst thing that's ever happened to Africa. I would say, was it really Christianity that was used or was it a distorted view of Christianity? Because he accepts that there are, he accepts that there are distortions even in African spirituality. So why can't there be distortions in Christianity as well? And then lastly, if you're going to tell the story about Christianity, tell the whole story. Don't push a narrative that fits into your agenda, but actually help people to see this is where Christianity has been misused. And this is where it's been used to empower and liberate people. I think we can have better discussions and engagements when we have all the information here and we interpret it not subjectively, but objectively. In other words, don't bring your own interpretation, but actually take the information as it is. And I think that you know, we will have a more meaningful engagement with people if we, we don't you know, sort of push a certain narrative, but actually allow the information to speak for itself. This is Bistrat for Africa, a channel dedicated to giving you Christian commentary on religious and spiritual matters. We'll see you guys on the next video.